Hey guys, uh, welcome to the figure drawing tutorial. Uh, this is going to be our reference for the tutorial, okay? So this is Perseus Triumphant by Antonio Canova. So just watch the video as I walk you through how to draw this. So as you can see here, I've already gone ahead and kind of did like a initial sketch, just kind of blocking in the figure, just using basic shapes, trying to figure out the angle of uh, the rotation of the torso and the pelvis and the head. Um, so it's a really good idea to do those sort of initial block-ins, so to speak, before you actually start on the final drawing. And so what I'm doing here right now is I'm basically just demonstrating the proportions of the figure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing a vertical line. This is the beginning of the drawing. I'm going to mark on the paper where the top and where the bottom is. If you divide that measurement in half, you'll find the pubis bone, okay, which is the bottom of the pelvis. If you divide the height between the pubis and the top of the head, you'll find the placement of the nipples. And if you divide the length between the pubis and the feet in half, that's where you'll find the head of the tibia, okay? So that's like the bottom of the kneecap. And those are sort of the main proportions that you wanna keep in mind. So right here, I'm drawing in the angle of the feet and I'm drawing in the angle of the knees, okay? So I'm going across and I'm drawing in these horizontal axes through that vertical line so I can figure out the tilt of the figure, okay? So then what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of drawing in the shoulders and the placement of the shoulders is just below the chin there, okay? And I'm figuring out the tilt of the shoulders. So this statue, he's got his left shoulder is slightly raised and the his right shoulder is actually a bit lower. So I'm just kind of marking those key points there. And what I did just there actually was I took the height of the head because the distance from the neck to each tip of the shoulder is actually the length of the head, all right? And I've done that on each side. And here I'm just sketching in the other proportions. So if you divide the height of the nipples and the height of the pubis bone in half, you'll get the waist, more or less. And right now, with all the main proportions mapped in, I can just start blocking in the the silhouette of the figure. And I'm just using really, really soft lines at this moment. Uh, if you're using hard lines, that's, that's definite, okay? And you kind of want to avoid making definite decisions this early on in the drawing process, okay? So like soft, fuzzy lines are going to be much preferable uh, because they're a lot lighter, you can adjust them a lot more easily, and you can sort of fix them up. So right there, I'm just kind of marking the height of the crotch and coming across now, sort of doing the arms. Just And, and you'll notice that I'm jumping all around the figure, okay? I'm not spending too much time in one particular area. If you spend too much time in a particular area, then you risk getting tunnel visioned into that area and you can actually lose sight of the proportions a little bit. Uh, in this stage of the drawing, it's really important that you're moving fairly quickly or or at, a, at least at a pace that's comfortable to you and just make sure that you are jumping all around the figure and trying to, you know, draw the arms, draw the legs and, you know, just avoiding that tunnel vision because that's what's going to mess you up the most. So basically with the left arm there, I'm trying to figure out its relation. Well, I'm trying to figure out the position of the, the left arm in relation to the head. And right now I'm drawing in Medusa's head, which shares the same proportion as Perseus. So you can take his height of the head there and, you know, use that for Medusa's head. Uh, so now I'm just kind of getting the tilt of that torso. He's kind of bending his torso a little bit. So I've marked that with like a sort of curved vertical line. 
And now I'm coming back into the torso and I'm just kind of drawing the pecs here, okay? So I think that's like the pectoralis minor, I think it's called. Um, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've done anatomy, but it's something like that. And I'm kind of using these ellipses for the rib cage and the hips. And those ellipses are helping me to define... Okay, right here, so I'm putting in the top of the pelvis. That's what I'm drawing in right now. Um, so that's the top of the pelvis. But yeah, those ellipses help me to figure out the exact tilt of that torso, okay? So I'm always keeping that structure. I'm keeping that three-dimensional structure in mind. And now I'm just kind of drawing these lines across the figure, just making sure that the tilt is correct and just making sure that the figure is symmetrical in relation to those tilted angles, okay? So like the armpits need to be basically positioned correctly and, and the waist and so on and so forth. And once you've got that sort of basic stuff in there, okay, so here what, here what I'm doing now is I'm drawing the uh, trapezius muscle and then, and then I'm drawing the cylinder of the neck, okay? So the neck can be sil simplified as a cylinder. And this is kind of how I draw. I draw as if I can see through the figure. I don't just draw the things that is right there in front of me. I actually draw all around. I draw the parts that I can't see because that's how you think more three-dimensionally and that's how you improve your, not just figure drawings, but just drawing in general. But yeah, having established the basics, I can now start uh, with a little bit more confidence. I can actually start detailing it a little bit more. So putting in the pecs, putting in the, uh, the rib cage here, or uh, they call that the Greek arch, where it's like a really wide rib cage, that sort of C shape that sits underneath the pecs. And putting in like the skin folds that sit right above the pelvis, the top of the pelvis, so that's like the waist where those parts sort of curl in. And as you can see, like this, this figure is beginning to look a bit more three-dimensional. So I started off with a very 2D block in, just trying to get the shapes in there. And now I'm thinking a little bit more three-dimensionally, uh, just drawing a little bit of ball bag there. Um, <clears throat> coming down to the knees. Okay, yeah, and here what I'm doing is I'm kind of drawing in the uh, breastplate, I suppose you could call it, or just, just the chest, I suppose. Yeah, the chest plate would make more sense. But I like to draw it as if it kind of wraps around the back of the neck and then comes back to each side. I just think that's a really cool shape to work with. And that's basically what it does. So, um, so again, like I'm not really thinking in terms of anatomy. Uh, to tell you the truth, my anatomical knowledge is not that great. Um, I studied it years ago, but yeah, you know, like, like everything else, you just end up forgetting. Uh, but I am thinking in terms of structure. Okay. So I'm kind of analyzing my reference and I'm thinking, okay, uh, if I could simplify that as a shape, what would that look like? Is it a bit more curved? Is it a bit more rounded? Is it a more solid shape? You can see right here, I'm drawing in the planes of the feet and I'm kind of just separating that top plane from the side plane. So I'm not thinking in terms of anatomy. I'm thinking in terms of shape, proportion, and structure. And that's it. I, I don't want to bog myself down with anatomy too much. So drawing the top of the knees here, just kind of just guesstimating the placement of it all. And again, this is all pretty much guesstimation. I'm not really... Uh, I'm not really measuring at this point. Um, I'm kind of drawing with feeling, which is quite difficult to do, especially if you're new to this, but that's something that can only get better with practice, unfortunately. You know, you keep doing these quick sketches until you get it to a point where everything just looks good, everything just sits right. But again, you have to really um, sensitize yourself to proportion in order to be able to do that right. So I've kind of just dabbled with the hand a little bit here. Um, not 
staying there for too long. I've just put in a little bit of detail and then I just move on. Like I'm moving on to the other arm right now. And again, <clears throat> this is this is the whole process, right? Like this is how it goes. You, you don't just focus on drawing one little bit. You're constantly moving all across the page. Uh, the moment you get tunnel visioned, that's that's game over. Or at least I think it is. So, you know, I think a good drawing, you, you know, you want to feel that momentum in there. You want to see that energy and you want to make sure that you are constantly moving the pencil around. Um, because if you if you spend too much time in one area, then you're actually far more likely to make mistakes. So it's a really good idea to just keep draw, uh, jumping around the drawing so that you could basically keep things fresh. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if you get stuck on one particular area, if, if one part's too difficult, then you simply just move on to the next part and then just come back to it later. That's literally the process. So here, right here, I'm just kind of demonstrating sharp lines as opposed to fuzzy lines. Um, so once you've kind of mapped out the proportions, once, you, once you've got a much better feel of things, then you can start using sharper lines where you know those proportions are a bit more definite. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. Like I'm detailing the tricep, the, uh, the deltoid um, or, the, or the shoulders, uh, sort of drawing that elbow. But you'll notice that I'm actually using broken lines throughout this process. So again, still jumping around. I'm not trying to draw all around the figure just yet. I'm actually using a lot of broken lines um, because then that way I don't really have to commit to any particular shape. Once that's done, you can see here, I've, I'm starting to add a little bit of shading and I'm not being too precise about it. I'm just sort of hatching what I think should be in shadow, but I'm doing it very, very lightly. Uh, and I, I would highly recommend that you do it lightly because um, if you go too dark, it's very, very difficult to fix that. So keep your strokes very light. Don't sp Again, don't spend too much time in one particular area. You want to keep moving around. So I'm just shading. This whole leg, as you can see in the reference, is pretty much in shadow. And that's what I've done. And I'm kind of shading the background behind it. It's not noticeable in the video, but I have shaded some of that. Um, just to make that, that leg sort of fade into the background a little bit. Um, I'll probably talk a little bit more about why I do that uh, later on. But... Uh, for now, I'll just keep describing what I'm doing. Okay, so here I'm just sort of mapping out the proportions of the face. So if you divide the height between the top of the head and the chin in half, you'll actually find the eyes. Right there, I've just marked the hairline. And if you divide the distance between the hairline and the chin into three equal parts, you'll find the level of the eyebrows, and you will also find the level of the base of the nose, okay? That's just classical proportions, uh, which works for us because this is a classical sculpture. But you can use those general proportions on uh, real people too. So I've just kind of marked those proportions off to the side. And that's another good tip, actually. If you're struggling to keep on top of the drawing or if you're struggling to remember some of these proportions, it's a good idea to just kind of put a vertical line uh, to the side of the figure and just mark them on that vertical line so that you can then uh, keep on top of it. So I'm just sketching in the helmet now. Uh, again, just blocking it in. I'm not trying to um, make it detailed or anything like that. Like my attention is coming back to the figure now because that's really the main part of the drawing, okay? The, the, the main part of any figure drawing really is the, uh, is the torso, generally speaking. So I always return to it. Arms and legs are pretty much secondary. And so is the head for that matter. So I'm kind of cleaning up those lines a little bit more. I'm 
trying to figure out that contour a little bit. Now that I've got the shadows in there and I've sort of mapped out some of the other proportions, I can kind of go into the line work with a little bit more confidence. So just kind of sketching in those calf muscles. And now I'm returning to the shadows. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of building up that core shadow, right? And that core shadow, the core shadow is the border between shade and light. Okay, it, it, it's, the, it's the border between light and shadow. And you really want to spend quite a fair bit of time in that area because that's what makes your drawing look three-dimensional. And again, I'm not making it too dark, but I am making it noticeable, okay? Uh, I'm just going through, sketching it in there, sketching in the kneecap, trying to figure out those shadow shapes without getting obsessed with the details. But as you can see, when I put that core shadow in there, the, the figure is kind of jumping out to you. Okay, again, that's what makes it three-dimensional. Even this early on in the drawing, it, it's sort of protruding onto the viewer and that, that's exactly what you want. And I, again, as I said, I spend a fair bit of time doing this. This is a big, once you start the rendering process, this is where it becomes a big uh, back and forth. Another tip actually that I can give you is to make your cast shadows darker than the shades, okay? So there's a difference between a cast shadow and a shade. A shade is where the form has turned away from light and it's in darkness. A cast shadow is a shadow that's being cast by another object. Um, so in this case, like if you have a look just underneath the pecs, the pecs or, or the right pec is actually... Uh, casting a shadow just on the rib cage there, um, and the torso is casting a small shadow on the on the right arm of the figure, and there's a cast shadow on the right leg as well that's being cast by the left leg. So, again, if if you want to sell that three dimensionality, I, is that a word? Dimension, whatever. But, you know, if, you, if you're trying to sell that three-dimensional effect, you want to make sure you're sort of differentiating between the shades and the cast shadows, all right? And I'm strengthening in that core shadow again and sort of detailing that calf muscle there on the left leg. So putting in a bit of a car, uh, core shadow there just to make that look a little more three-dimensional. And the right leg, in comparison, actually looks quite flat, to the left one and that's deliberate so here's another tip for figure drawing whenever you're drawing paired objects like legs hands arms one has to be more detailed than the other and typically it's the one that has more light okay so the left leg has a lot more light than the right leg okay the right leg is completely in shadow so therefore i'm going to render that flatter and I'm not going to spend too much time uh, in that area. So just darkening the armpit in there. So now I'm trying to think of like where all those dark areas are going to be. Um, not detailing it too much, but just enough to, again, sell that effect. And doing the same on the other side. And that's the thing. If you've done... If you've drawn one side of the figure, make sure you draw the opposite side. So if you've drawn the armpit, make sure you draw the left. If you've drawn the, the right shoulder blade, for example, make sure you draw the, the left shoulder blade. Um, it just keeps things in control. And now I'm coming back to that core shadow. Uh, like I said, I spend a lot of time in that area because that's Arguably the most important area of the entire drawing is, is that border between light and shadow. So I, I spend a lot of time in there. Uh, because again, that's what's going to make the drawing look three-dimensional. And 
and just trying to figure out some of those shadow shapes in the center. There's a slight shadow that crosses the center of the figure, so that's kind of what I'm doing there. And here what I'm doing is I'm kind of starting to get into some of those half tones right now, okay? So I'm starting to shade some of the lights. Um, you can see that part of the torso kind of tucks into itself, like it folds in on itself. You know that part just above the belly button? So that's why I'm kind of shading in those areas just to kind of uh, sell the effect of that. Going across the chest now and the shoulders and yeah, just trying to start detailing some of those lighter tones um, without going too far into it. I mean, that that's more of a you do more of that later on in the drawing process. Like right now, I would still stick with the shadows for a while just to make sure that I've got them how I want them. So coming back to the head, trying to figure out the shape of that helmet a little bit more. And again, not really, like I'm sort of drawing the wing on his helmet, but I, I'm not spending too much time on that. I, I just come back to that later. You really want to make sure you don't get distracted by details because basically you've got more important things to do. You know, you've got to keep mapping out the figure. You've got to keep getting those tones in there, reworking those proportions. There's, there's still a hell of a lot to be done before you can start going too far into detail. And this is quite a small drawing anyway, uh, so I wouldn't make it that detailed to begin with. Um, if I wanted to do a really detailed figure drawing, I would have to make it uh, a little bit bigger. So coming back into that core shadow again. And it's getting there. Like even the shadow shapes are looking a little bit more refined. They don't look as blocky. Uh, they look a little bit more organic. But that's because I'm constantly drawing over the top of it and constantly refining it. And I don't really do much erasing. Uh, I keep my lines very light to begin with. And then I just darken them over time. And it's just so much easier to do it that way. So putting in a, just shading in some of the lights on the leg, just trying to get that three-dimensional effect coming through. There's a bit of a cast shadow on top of the knee there, so I'm just trying to capture that. And yeah, this is literally where it just becomes a really big, Back and forth, honestly. It's just repeating the same process that we've already done and trying to find new things in the process. So really trying to render that waist now, like that sort of, that, that fold that's in between the pelvis and the rib cage. I'm really trying to sell the effect on that. Okay, so I've just kind of like skipped ahead here. So the shadows are a bit more rendered and you can see on the shadow side of the figure, if you have a look at the torso, I've sort of darkened the lines in there a little bit. And the face is a little bit more detailed, but again, I just didn't spend too much time in that. I just kind of sketched in an eye or or an impression of an eye and just sort of left it like that. And now I'm just kind of shading in the neck, so sort of shading in that jugular, trying to strengthen the tones in that a little bit more. Shading the notch of the neck where it meets the chest. And there's a, there's a slight cast shadow on the neck that's being cast by the face. So I'm darkening that. 
but the jawline I'm keeping relatively light because that's going to receive a lot of reflected light from the actual figure itself. So that shade is actually rendered quite lightly. And now I'm coming back into the torso and I come back to the torso a lot because as I said before, it's, it, it's really the main part of the figure drawing, okay? If you're doing a portrait of somebody, you would focus more on the face. But figures, typically you spend more time on the torso trying to get all of those anatomical details to look as uh, refined as you possibly can. And again, as I mentioned before, my knowledge of anatomy has kind of faded over the years. It's just not really a subject that I was ever an expert in. But I've retained some of the information and, you know, when I draw from references like this, I, you know, I just kind of try to understand the structure of what I'm looking at. So I don't think of things in terms of pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, uh, the serratus anterior or the jugular or the jaw or whatever. I don't really think of body parts. I, I actually think in terms of shape, okay? So I'll ask myself, okay, is this a bit more circular? Is it a bit more triangular? Is it, is it more round? Is it more square, you know? Um, try to think in terms of shape, try to figure out the structure of that because that's going to be a lot more useful to you and it's just easier to remember. Um, I mean, look, the more you know about anatomy, then the better your figure drawings are going to be. That's, I think that's kind of obvious, but uh, I think a big thing is actually having, first of all, a solid understanding of perspective. Um, if you, The better you are at perspective drawing, the better you're going to be able to draw everything, not just figures, but everything. Um, and then secondly, just having a clear understanding of, of the structure, right? So the torso is kind of cylindrical. The chest gets a little bit more square. The shoulders, they're a bit more, I guess, triangular. And the arms could be simplified as cylinders. So, you know, again, whenever you're toning and shading the figure, you want to keep the basic shapes in mind, try to simplify those forms and then add detail on top of those forms. It's, uh, it's honestly the best way to work. And, and it could, because then it just becomes easy. Like you know, this is just detail now. Like this is just me going over the torso, refining some of those shapes, which is easy to do because I've already done the hard work of trying to map out the proportions and simplifying the shapes. The, the rest just gets easier now. And I can just keep honing and refining the torso. So, and, and, and I basically have to do the same for the limbs, right? I would not make the limbs as detailed as the torso. Again, whenever you're drawing, and this isn't just figure drawing, this is drawing in general, there has to be a primary and there has to be a secondary, okay? If you draw everything equally, as in everything has an equal amount of detail, then uh, the whole composition just doesn't really look good. Uh, there needs to be a focal point. And for me, the focal point is the torso or at least the transition between light and shade. You know, I think there's just a lot of interesting shadow shapes in there. So that's what I'm focusing on the most. So anytime anything gets a little bit too dark, don't be afraid to uh, get the eraser in there. The, the eraser is a tool, just like the pencil. The pencil darkens and the eraser lightens. That's literally all you have to remember. So just kind of drawing in some of the details of the hips there, just kind of getting that turning of the light happening. Same on that side too, just really getting that core shadow more involved on the right leg there. Uh, but this concludes this part of the video. I will upload the next one pretty soon when I've drawn more of this. So see you in the next video.